Hey guys, 123 Toy back again with another video, and in this video, we're going to be talking about full range drivers. I know what you're thinking, why would he ever waste a video on full range drivers? Don't worry, I'm not going to waste a video on full range drivers. I'm actually going to be wasting two videos on full range drivers. But believe it or not, it's not a waste at all. Most people are under the impression that all you have to do with a full range driver is stick it in a box and you are good to go. And although you can do that and you can get decent sound quality out of it, I'm here to show you a better way and how to best get the sound quality out of a full range driver. In order to do that, we're gonna go ahead and hop on the computer and open up a free program called XSIM. Take a look down in the description to download that program if you don't have it already. All right guys, let's go ahead and hit the computer. All right guys, so we opened up XSIM and I already have the files that I need downloaded from Parse Express website. And I downloaded the FRD and ZMA files from the RS100, which is a reference series full range driver by Dayton, it's a four inch driver. So what I'm gonna need to do is just go ahead and load those files up. And I'll load both the ZMA and FRDs and I'll go ahead and name it. That way we don't forget which actual driver we're messing with. Let's go ahead and add some grounds and let's go ahead and connect this to the power so we can see what the frequency response will look like. All right, so this is the supposed frequency response that you're going to get if you put this directly in a box. So if you take a look at it, it doesn't look too terribly bad. I mean, you have a big bump right here at 3,500 hertz and you have another one right up here at, uh, let's see, what is it, about 16, 16K or 16 kilohertz. But really, for the most part, it doesn't look terrible, but there's something that we're not taking into account, and that's the baffle step. All right, for those of you who have never seen my video on baffle step correction, you should probably just go ahead and stop and watch it. It's a great video. I'm going to go ahead and put a link up here and also down in the description. But what you really want to know is that based off of just putting this inside a box, you're going to lose between three to six decibels of bass response. And that's going to be throughout the base spectrum and based off the width of the cabinet, it's going to talk about where that's actually going to start. So watch that video. It's going to explain all that for you. But in this particular case, what we can see is that it looks like the base region is about 86 decibels. Well, if we lose three to six decibels on there, that means that this is going to be closer to 80 decibels of base, meaning that your high end is going to be really, really high and you're not going to have much base. Now that might not be a problem if you're going to have like an active subwoofer with it. But if you're using this just as a full range speaker and want the full complement of sounds, then you're probably going to want to add what we call a baffle step circuit. So let's go ahead and show you what that consists of and what each individual part does. So in order to do that, I'm going to go ahead and delete this line right here. And we're going to go ahead and throw an inductor. Now, for those of you who know a little bit about crossovers, what you're going to know is an inductor by itself is a first order crossover that you'd stick with, typically stick on a woofer. And that's exactly what it does. It crosses this over and then it just drops that high end off. Obviously, that's not what we want because that means that, you know, our usual frequency range, if we're going by 80 decibels, is really right here at a thousand hertz, which is, oh, I mean, that's, that's not good. So let's go ahead and throw a resistor on there. When we throw a resistor in parallel, this now creates what we call a baffle step circuit. Now watch that high end as soon as we plug this up. So there we go. And look, it just all of a sudden raised that right back up. That's really cool because that's exactly what you want a baffle step circuit to do. And that's what it should do. Basically, it wants the base end up higher and everything past that base end of whatever you have decided where your baffle step ends should be lower by between three to six decibels. So we're gonna be just using the reference of 80 decibels in this. We're gonna assume that you want a full baffle step. All right, so if we assume that, uh, we're going to notice that this is not good because we want these really closer to this 80 hertz and they're all the way down to like 75, so that's not good enough. So let's show you what each and every one of these components does. The inductor is just like a crossover on your woofer. The higher you go, the sooner it starts the baffle step. So if you know that you want your baffle step to end around 500 hertz, you're going to want to raise this until it is 500 hertz. Or if you want it to be at 1000, you're gonna lower this down. 
Now, if you're not sure what I'm talking about, that's because you haven't watched that other video. So watch that video first. You'll understand what that means once you watch that. So let's just go ahead and change that back to one for the time being and show you what the resistor does. Now, with the resistor, it does exactly what you would imagine it to do. The higher you go, the more it attenuates the speaker. The lower the resistor value, the more it raises it back up. So if we lower this, oh, look at that. Right around there looks really good. Everything's right around, yeah, so maybe 6.8, 6.2, somewhere in that range looks really, really good. In fact, maybe we'll just split the difference and go 6.5. But when you look at that, now everything's looking really, really good, right? We have our baffle step, we have our big bass hump right here, and everything else is right around that 80 decibels, which is perfect. I mean, that's exactly what we want. So what's this speaker gonna sound like? Well, this speaker's gonna have a full actual range or complement of sound. But really, so far, we have what looks like a really nice speaker. Now, there's a couple problems that we see on this. We are going to notice that there are some issues up here, especially right here at 16 kilohertz. Don't worry about that. The next video is going to show you what you need to do in order to take care of that. So look forward to that. That's going to be coming out next week. If you have any questions about this particular video, don't forget to leave them in the description below. If you enjoyed this and want to watch more videos, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and ring the bell so that you get instant notification of each and every video that comes out. Guys, I just want to thank you for supporting me. If you want to find another way to support me, check out my Patreon page and check out my t-shirts that I have available for sale. It just does help support the channel in another way. And if there's any of you guys that want to get into speaker building but don't either have the knowledge or tools yet, check out my kits that I have for sale. There might be some really cool kits that you are interested in. All right, thanks, guys. Have a great day, and I can't wait to see you next time.